What's boppin'? This your boy Larry. How y'all doing, y'all? Y'all good? All right, I'm good too. How's y'all on the break going? Y'all staying in quarantine? Y'all staying in the house? Yeah, me too. Ain't nowhere to go, you know? Just chilling, straight chilling. But hey, I got a video here for y'all today, man. It's a word, and I believe it's just for you. The title name is The Devil Is A Lie. Mm. The, I done heard that quote so many times in my life, y'all. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Now let me tell you why the devil is a liar. The definition of Satan, the chief evil, the definition is that he is the chief evil spirit, the great adversary of humanity, the devil. The great adversary, he's our opponent. He is against us. He is not for us. He is our opponent. He is trying to scheme and win, I mean, beat us in all aspects. Um, in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 12, it says, We know very well what Satan's plans are. We know what Satan's plans are. They are not for our good, but they are for our bad. They are for, um, they are to destroy us. They are to kill us and steal, steal from us and stuff like that. In John, verse, in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The chief's purpose is to kill and steal and destroy. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, that these purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, which means his purpose is, is to try every and anything to get over us and to finesse us and to steal from us and destroy from us things that the devil longs to steal the devil longs to steal your joy he tries to bring disaster and suffering into your life he longs to steal that happiness that you had before he, he longs to steal that joy that the lord has instilled in you but and another thing the devil likes to steal your peace he tries to sow seeds of wicked thoughts and lies into your head he tries to say that you're not good enough he tries to say you're never going to be successful he tries to say you're never going to be loved he tries to say that no one loves you but you must remember that god has given you power and authority over your thoughts god has given you power and authority over the enemy and over your thoughts in second corinthians 10 verse 5 it says and we tear down every proud idea that raises itself against the knowledge of god which means if it exceeds the knowledge of god if it ex exceeds the teaching that comes from this word you have to tear it down if it goes um against it if it's saying something that is not in this world you have to tear it down you have to cast it down god has given you the power it also says we also capture every thought and make it give up and obey christ you have to capture every thought and make it give up and obey christ the devil tries to steal your obedience to god by simply tempting you and luring you into the patterns of this world some of the patterns of this world involve partying lying stealing being unforgiving using abusive words and treating others with disrespect and stuff like that and curse words those are not of god those are some of the patterns of this world god says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be renewed by the transforming of your mind testing and proving god's will and his perfect pleasing perfect will it goes somewhere like that that was my paraphrase but we have to let our mind be renewed to god's word we have to let our mind be renewed to god's pleasing will we have to let it be renewed we also have to stay alert and watch out for the great enemy the devil because in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says stay alert watch out for your great enemy the devil he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour the devil is not going to attack you at your strengths he's going to attack you at your weakest points and at your weak at your weaknesses that so that's why we got to stay strong in the lord the devil's gonna he's looking for you when you're at your loneliest points at the lowest points the devil's not gonna attack you when you're with your whole church group and you're up there turned praising he's gonna attack you when you are away he attacks that one sheep he attacks that one sheep that has wandered away from the king but thank god we have a shepherd that chases that one sheep in ephesians we have to know that god gave us a armor too to protect us from the devil in ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 through 8 it says put on all of god's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places therefore put on every piece of god's armor so you will be able to test so you be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you will stand You'll be standing strong, firm, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. We have to put the belt of truth. We have to know the truth. We have to get in God's word to know the truth. Next, you have to um, put on the body armor of God's righteousness. We have to live in God's righteousness. God has made us holy through the sanctification of Jesus Christ. So we have to live that way. We have to live righteous. We have to follow God's teachings and obey him. 
Next, we have to put on the shoes of peace. We have to know that God's peace is within us. We got to know like when we pray and put our petitions up to God, that God will transfer, um, give us that overwhelming amount of peace. We also have to put on for, uh, we have to put on shoes of peace and then we got to um, know that it comes from the good news that came from Jesus Christ. In addition, we have to hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. We have to have faith and we have to put on salvation as our helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have to know that God has given us a, another weapon, which is his word. This is, a, this is a main weapon that God has given us to go against Satan. Every lie that Satan says, we have to throw it back. When Satan says we are not loved, we have to know that God said, for God so loved the world. When Satan says that you are below, but God said that you are above and not beneath. When Satan says you are the tail, God says you are the you are the head and not the tail. We have to know God's word and we have to apply it. We have to deflect every lie of Satan and every lie that Satan tries to put in our head and in our mind. And we have to stay alert and we have to be persistent in our prayer prayers for all believers everywhere we have to pray for others we have to pray for one another now is a great time to pray for one another because we are at home we are in quarantine this is a great time for everyone to pray for one another pray for everybody pray for your best friend pray for your enemies pray for your loved ones pray for everybody pray for those you don't even know pray for the sick pray for the healed pray for everybody i will be praying also the devil doesn't like you. He studies you and he learns your weaknesses. That's why you have to make your weaknesses your strengths. Because in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, it says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. God says his grace is all that you need. All that you need is his grace. You don't, you don't need all that money. You don't need all that fame. You don't need, all you need is God's grace. His power works best in weaknesses. Go to God. Turn to Jesus today. And let his strengths be made perfect in your weaknesses. This is part one of The Devil is a Liar. Part two is coming in a couple of days. But yeah, I love y'all. Stay blessed. If you have any questions, hit me up. Peace.